Hello everyone, Tanaz Hyder with Action VFX. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do manual camera tracking in the Foundry's Nuke. We will learn how to select our points for our 3D tracking data, and then I will show you how to use that data to do a simple compositing. Anyway, without further ado, let's begin. Okay, so here is my plate. What we want to do is we want to get a 3D camera track of this scene so I can add my atmospheric fog from Action VFX Atmospheric Smoke and Fog Volume 2 collection into the scene. In Nuke, you can 3D track by using the camera tracker node. And there are two basic ways on how to do this tracking, which is to do it automatically or manually. The principle of 3D tracking is very simple. First, you need to track 2D points from your shot. And then based on the movements of those points, Nuke will then try to guess or solve what the 3D movement of your camera is like. In automatic workflow, you can create all these 2D point tracks by just click on the track button and Nuke would automatically pick the most suitable points to track in the scene. These 2D points that have been generated can now be used to solve or generate 3D camera track of the scene. And here we have a pretty good solve for our camera tracking. Here we can see that we have the number 0.89 this number is the error number of our track. The bigger the number, the more janky or fuzzy the tracking is. So it is advisable to get the number as low as you can. Like for this scene, I don't need a super extreme precision of the fog, but I need to get like a good general motion of the camera in order to put my fog correctly. So something just below 1, like 0.89, is pretty good. From there, we can then generate our camera and scene nodes to start compositing our elements. And that was for automatic tracking. And now in the manual tracking, the workflow is the same, except instead of relying on Nuke's automation to pick the 2D points to solve, we are going to pick those 2D points ourselves. This allow us to have more handsy approach to give more controls to how the solve would look like. So to create our own point track, we can go to this user track tab and then we can add a track point and use it to manually track our shot. Or my preferable method is instead of using the points from here, I'm going to use the tracker node and create the points there and then import it to the camera track. So let's get a tracker node and plug it into our scene and then we're going to start tracking our points. But where do we put our point tracks? Which parts of the scene do we want to track for our camera tracker? Well, first, of course, you want to track a contrast pixel on the shot, which we have a lot in this plate. But also, we want to make our points to be solvable by the camera tracker node. If we look at our automatic track points, we can see that we have points tracking on the foreground, and then on the big rock on the mid-ground, and then also the background. These tracking points in different set of depth create a nice illusion of parallax that is so clear that our tracker node can very easily solve the camera animation based on these points. This is so clear in fact that even if you disable the plate and just see the points, we can still make out what the scene movement is like. So just like this, what we're going to do is we're going to track some points on the foreground and then the midground and the background to give a really good visual parallax movement for our camera tracker node to solve. So let's create a tracker. And then let's pick this contrast here on the rock and I'm going to start tracking. Perfect. Now I'm going to add several more points in the scene. We're not going to add too many points. In fact, I want to try to solve this scene with the least amount of trackers as possible. Okay, so this is my track so far. I have eight points that I spread around the scene. Eight is the minimum amount of points needed for the track solver to work. So the way I approach that is that that means I need to have eight points present at all times in the scene. So now we can actually solve this track. But now of course, just because it is solvable doesn't mean it's accurate. So I'm going to add more points. But before we do, I want to explain a little bit about why I picked the points that I picked. As I mentioned earlier, we need to have a movement in different depth to simulate a parallax in the scene. So I have points on the foreground here, and then points on the mid ground, and then this point on the background. So in my mid-ground, I added most of the points because it is the center of our shot. It is the plate's point of interest. So getting a good hold of this rock would really help tell our solver that we have a center object that the camera is looking at. 
and then I use multiple of points instead of just one as my center pivot because I want to emphasize that our rock here has volume instead of just one dot. And then I have these three points on my foreground. And as you can see, I have these two points on the left and then this one point on the right to balance it out. So I have tracking on the left side and also the right side. So while having a spread out track that is on many different sides, it's good to make sure that you cover all your bases. Having a cluster of points that is close together like this would also really help because it tells the solver that there is a small surface here. So by combining the parallax of the points that are close together and the ones that are far away, it would really help in creating a more accurate result. And then on the background here, I added one point just to establish a parallax, but I didn't bother putting too much point in there because the elements that I want to add is on the foreground. So I'm really focusing on the points that are closer to the camera. So all of these points I also picked because they are present in the entire duration of the shot. So it helps establish that this whole thing is one continuous shot. So now that I have basically the backbone of my track, now I'm going to add some of the more supportive point tracks. I'm going to start adding points that have shorter lifespan, like some points that are maybe like on the foreground here that will be covered, or some points that are on the background on the gravel there that will be covered by the giant rock. So let's pick a point on the gravel on the back there and let's hit track and then stop just before it got behind the big rock. And then let's track the points frame by frame until it get covered by the rock. Okay, so this is perfect. We're just going to leave it as it is. So now I'm going to add even more points into the scene. So we have at least a couple more. One tip on 2D tracking, if you find your tracking path looking a bit jittery, what you can do is to just retrace the jittery track using the frame by frame method. Okay, so now we have our tracking points here. So this is pretty good. I have added some more points on the background and then also on the near foreground here, I have also added more. So now let's go to our camera tracker node again. And then on the user track, let's click import trackers and select our tracker node. And there we go, we have our trackers imported. Now we can actually combine our user track with the automatic track by just clicking the track button here. But for now, let's just use our manual trackers to solve. And we're going to click solve. And now we have our 3D track data. Now let's check our error number. Here we have 0.99. That's pretty good. Now let's compare it with our automatic track, which is 0.89. So our track is not too far off. Our 3D track is workable, but let's see if we can get our manual track closer to our automatic track. So we can change our error number here by deleting a point or adding one. So here, let's look at our points. This point at the back here, I actually don't like very much. It's not tracking really good. So let's delete it. And then let's update solve. And there we go. We have reduced the track to 0.93. So now let's find another point to delete. Other consideration in deleting points is to delete ones with pretty big error numbers. So select a point like this one. And if you see a pretty big error number being displayed, delete it. And then let's update again. And boom, we have 0.89, the exact same number as our automatic track. Now you can absolutely keep deleting points until we have very low error number like 0.5 or 0.2. However, while having a low error number is preferable, something to keep in mind is that low error number just means that Nuke is able to easily solve its calculation based on the tracker points that it has. So that doesn't mean that the final camera animation that is produced will match perfectly with the real camera on the plate. Because at the end, Nuke can only work with the data, in this case, the tracker points that we provided. So the way I usually work is that I try to get my track until it looks pretty good and has the soft error number below one. And then I would start adding my elements. And if it turns out the camera track is still off, I go back and delete or add more points on the camera track and keep updating the soft. So for this one, 0.89 is pretty good, especially for just adding fog elements into the scene. But let's check our track accuracy just in case. Let's make sure that the link output is checked that way, if we change our soft data, our camera will be updated automatically. And then select the scene plus and create. And here we have our 3D nodes 
And if we look at our 3D scene, we have our 3D camera and point clouds. Now let's disable our point cloud because we don't need it. And then on the camera tracker node, let's select a 3D point and then right click and create a 3D card based on that point's position. And then let's plug the card into the 3D scene and then change the card render to wireframe, rows and columns to 2x2, two two, and then let's scale it down. Okay, now let's look at our final render. And so here, I am using the card to see the accuracy of my track, which, as we can see here, we have a pretty good track. The card is sticking really well. But to make sure again, we can create more cards from more points to make sure that our track is looking good. Okay, so this is a pretty good track. So now I can add in my atmospheric fog. So here I have these two atmospheric fog from the atmospheric smoke and fog volume 2. Since they still have black background, I ran them through a shuffle node where I input the green as the alpha of the footage so it's see-through and then I added some color correction and then added chronos so I can speed up the footage a little bit and then I input them to 3D cards that I can just add into the 3D scene. And that was the tutorial on how to do manual 3D tracking in Nuke. If you want to purchase the FOC assets that I used or other high quality VFX stock footage, including some free ones, you can visit our website at actionvfx.com. At Action VFX, we provide high quality VFX assets for your VFX needs. We have fire, explosions, energy, and many, many others. You can also sign up for our Action VFX subscription starting at the low cost of $14.99 a month. This is the most affordable way to access our library and you can cancel anytime, no contract. Thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comment section below what kind of tutorials that you'd like to see next. And see you next time. Bye-bye.